In today's tutorial, I actually solve a problem. What's up, guys? Welcome to yet another crazy tutorial. So, I am working with a little project where I was dealing with uh, image sequences, uh, not movies, but actual images. So I have hundreds and hundreds of photos that when you look at them, oh, it's a nice time lapse of the clouds moving, how lovely. Uh, but unless I'm crazy and I've wasted days of my life trying to sort this, uh, there was no native way for me to do it in Max, so I threw together a quick patch that let me play it and then I realised that each uh, image sequence is slightly different in terms of naming and terminology so I used JavaScript and made a full more diverse program that can play almost any uh, image sequence as long as it has a format where it's in a folder and that folder has a image name wherever you want it to be, separator and then an image number. And that's what we've made here. So the way it works is we bang this big button, then it gives us a file browser. We pick our image sequence. Uh, and all you need to do is you can pick any file from your image sequence, open it, select the type of separator between your file name and your number, in this case it is a dash, and then play it. And it will do that. And we can use the metro to control the speed. So we can really slow it down. Or we can speed it up. And it will just loop through for us. With a bit more creativity, there is a, a way for us to send a, f a number into our JavaScript file to pick an individual image, but that wasn't what I was wanting to use it for. But you could adapt it so that uh, our JavaScript patcher that looks a bit like this. Uh, instead of prepending in this counter here, which is just running off the metro, you send out an actual file number so you can cut and splice movies together in this way rather than having to jump through them frame by frame. Why you would need this, I have no idea, but I had a very specific purpose that I was trying to fulfill and I did. So, how did we do it? The real question. First, we're going to start a new Max patch and we're going to deal with loading in our directory. So I'm going to create a bang, or in this case, I'll just do a button. Make it any size you wish. And we're going to pass that to something called the uh, open dialog, which if you don't know what this does, we look at the help file. When you bang into it, it opens up a file browser, pick a file, and it tells you the exact path for it. And we're going to use that to pass into our JavaScript nodes, and then JavaScript is going to do a bit of string manipulation for us and pass us back all the information we need to rebuild it. So simply enough, we're going to bang into the open dialog, and then from there, we are going to strip the path from it, and very similar to the way that the open dialog works. Uh, this just removes the end section from it, so it removes all that filler fluff from sort of user documents, images, etc. And as well as that, we are going to need a from symbol, and I'm going to use a separator period. And what this is going to do, it's going to take the information coming out of strip path and use period as a, a separator to remove the file type of the end of uh, the image. And from there I'm going to iterate it, and I'm not going to send it any specific numbers because I want the very last separation uh, that it gives us uh, to be the file type. And if we take the last one, then I know it's going to have to be the, the period before the file type because you can't get file types with periods in them. To give you a quick demonstration, if I pick a file, open it, I think it's spelled separator wrong, so now if I pick a file, bang it, I will get literally just the file type output. 
and we are going to use this later on when we recons uh, when we pick a folder we're going to use a special uh, folder object in max to tell us how many objects there are actually in the file uh, in that folder that we've selected so from here we're going to send file type because we're going to encapsulate this later on so we want to have all the stuff on hand we're going to send a dir path that's going to come out of here file type is going to come out of the iteration and then over here we're going to receive the dir path we're going to prepend that into I'm going to prepend something called shorten dir onto the start of it and that's because we're going to add a javascript file here that's going to do a little bit of string manipulation for us remove file.js is what I'm going to call it and now I'm, I need to save this new folder javascript image sequence player and then here we just call this uh, max patch now if I double click this it's going to create a, a javascript file coming called remove js and I'm going to save that in the same place and it should save the last directory I was in. So. so now we connect that up and open up our JavaScript file. And we're going to make our function shorten dir. And it's going to receive one file a variable, which is a. So now we've got our function. So when whatever we path pass in here, which is going to be our directory path. Uh, it's going to look, going to handle that in the shortened uh, function that we've just created, and we're going to create a variable called my string, and that is going to be equal to whatever we pass in at a. I'm going to create another variable called length, which is the length of my string, and then we need to do a little bit of fancy thing here. So I'm going to do var my string equals my string dot substring length and the reason we do that is because max is pass is passing in a symbol which means that it has speech marks either side of it so we essentially just create a substring which removes the start and finish point so now we should have uh, removes the speech marks from around the past in information. You can do this in max, but I found that it's more than likely to error when you from symbol and then pass that into the function than it is if we just handle it all in the JavaScript file. Now there is probably a reason for it, but I was far too lazy to go in and actually work it out. Uh, we could outlet zero my string I could preview this for you but uh, it does it's not going to work because when JavaScript outputs my string again it's going to turn it back into a symbol in Mac so we, it's impossible for me to show you that it's actually working but you're just gonna have to trust me so we have a message coming in that is looks like this so that's the full directory to the image we are going to create another one of these that looks like that so that we have the directory of the image folder that we're looking for without having to have two open dialog boxes and making it an extra step for the user. So in the JavaScript file, this is what we've got at the moment. We are going to add a, I've got a little comment copied here that just means it's easier for me to separate. section of code to deal with deleting the file name from the directory. Paste that again. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a lot of substring manipulation here, which basically means we're going to look at the length of strings and tell it to start and stop and send us different values. I'm going to create a variable called var num slash 
and we are going to use this to find out how many slashes there are in the directory, look at the section after the last slash, i.e. the file name, and we're going to use the length of that to substring manipulate it from the full uh, my string. Oh, that's not right. My string. I'm going to do my string dot split. And I'm going to split it using the slash as the split. And I'm going to split it over the length of the string. So that should report the number of and then we're gonna create a new one which is where my file name equals my string dot split. So the minus one at the end of num slash here gives us the array that is created when we split it over. So num slash gives us a value that we then take one away from, and that value is the number of sections between. So if we do, let's say, it was just Michael slash file slash images slash file name underscore 001.png. That's the file that we've got. Fire num slash gives us simply just a value that says how many slashes there are in the document. And down here, we create an array and then tell it to access the, the final piece of information. So the length of our num slash takeaway one. This is information zero, information one, information two, information three. So now my file name will just be file name underscore png gives us the file name info and now we're going to finally create a variable that contains just the shortened directory and that is my string dot substring start it at the beginning my string dot length take away my file name dot length and then I'm going to minus one as well because we need to get rid of the additional slash at the end here because we can add that back in simply uh, later on. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the length of this and then I'm using the entire length of this minus length of the file name take away an additional one to leave us with just micro file images that we can then manipulate later down the line. Close my brackets, semicolon, and I'm going to outlet zero short. If we save that, look at max, there is no errors. Now, if we attach a message box to the end of this, bang it, pick a file, it gives us nothing, which means I have made a mistake. I can't say I'm surprised. Okay, uh, cannot find Macintosh HD user. All right, okay. Uh, I'm going to change the name of my JavaScript file because the other file I still have open, it, open in the background is having a bad time. So I'm going to copy all of this, close that. Paste that, save it, save that. And when I compile it, we'll see if it does anything for us now. My file name is not defined line 14. So let's have a look at this. Line 14. My file name, just a spelling mistake. Save it. Test it. And there we go. So now you can see we've got an output that is the full length minus. So if I compare the two. 
we have the exact same, but this one is missing the actual file name. And the reason that's helpful is it means that we can use this to gauge how many files there are in that specific folder that we've picked from, and then use that to control the counter that we're going to use later on to select photos or the images. And the next stage is folder. And what the folder file does, if you've never used it, you can and it'll tell you a whole bunch of, in bunch of information about what is contained. All we're interested in from this is the right hand outlet here, which counts the number of items in the list. So we attach the full uh, a message to that so we get it. We are going to use a relative path object to turn the information coming out of JS, the, our JavaScript file here, to turn it into a, an actual path from the symbol. Plug that into folder. Folder depends on it being told the type of file type we're searching for, hence why we do the separation over here. But it is really fiddly in terms of capital letters and all that good stuff. So instead of just using the direct file we get of iterate, I'm going to do a mess, I'm going to bang that into a message which is types JPEG or types PNG. Now, even if your file is JPG, as in a JPEG, folder still needs to know it's looking for a JPEG with an E. It's really fiddly at that. Don't ask me why I didn't make it. And then I'm going to, to use the select message for JPEG. So if it is a JPEG we've got picked, then it will bang the JPEG. If it's a PNG, then it will bang the PNG because I know all the files I create that are JPEG are .jpg. Pass these into the folder. We use our relative path to bang a delay of 50 milliseconds just to make sure the folder is updated with the latest file type because this will all happen at the same time apart from the delay, which we need to make sure it happens last. All things going smoothly, pick a folder and we'll get a number of files in that folder. And just to confirm, there are, you can see, 717 photos, but my very first one is numbered 000, so I know there's 718 photos in this time lapse. Perfect. That part of the program is working. So now we can send number of files out. So we have three outputs now. We have number of files. I'm going to call them the number of files 1 just to make sure it doesn't interfere with down below. Dirt path and file type. So if we bring that closer, we can now edit, encapsulate, and we have patcher a directory handler. So directory handler is now outputting these three files. How long are we recording? Way too long. So I am going to stop this as part one and say we've dealt with that. And then in the next one, we'll look at actually piecing all these sections back together.